All right, so we are going to look at the upper appendage. So this is part of the appendicular skeleton. Um, these are the bones of um, the arm and uh, the shoulder girdle or pectoral girdle. So in the appendicular skeleton, we have what are called girdles that hold the appendage onto the axial skeleton. So the appendage that, that we're talking about is the arm. So we're looking at these two bones that help make up this uh, pectoral girdle. And the two bones are the clavicle and the scapula. Now, the clavicle is one of the, the very few non-remarkable bones. Most bones have very unique structures to them. You can see, like, we're going to look at this. I mean, there's, there's no other bone that has anything that looks like this. I have one that looks like a, a U or a little, again, a little Muppet, whoop, 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 right? Uh, crescent wrench, I've had students call it. I've got one that has this little suction cup bow and arrow on it. You know, they're very unique. Then we get to this bone. It's called the clavicle. The clavicle's pretty straightforward. It looks like a little flattened S. I've looked at different ways to try and remember it. It has one end that looks like um, if you've ever had one of those fancy little uh, cheese charcuterie boards where you get the little cheese spreader on it. Uh, looks like a little cheese spreader knife. Um, I also think that one end of it, I always say, uh, kind of, you know, it's, it looks like a little... Um, looks like a little head of a nail, like a uh, railroad tie or whatever. But anyway, that where this is, this is what is commonly called the collarbone, all right? So it is a fairly unremarkable bone, but when you're in a box filled with all kinds of things with unique features to it, things that don't have unique features are unique in themselves. So um, remember that this is a big jigsaw puzzle. So when you're looking at stuff like this, if I take this and I'm looking at it, it's too big to be in my hand. If I put my arm down next to it, it's definitely not going to be in my arm. Um, it's not, not going to be anything in the skull, right? And so as you're looking around, there's only certain places it can go into. Now, this is kind of an interesting thing, just a little FYI. With the clavicle, the only place that your whole upper appendage, this whole arm, attaches to the axial skeleton is between the clavicle and the manubrium right here. That's the only bony attachment. Everything else is muscular. But the clavicle will then articulate with a very unique bone called the scapula. So this is the scapula right here. It kind of looks like a pig ear in a way. Um, if you've ever, you know, I, I always grew up with dogs, and so there was a time when I remember getting pig ears for dogs living out in the country. So anyway, it always reminded me of that. But this is the scapula. When I was growing up as a kid, we'd call this the wing bone. I weighed about 100 pounds and was 6'3", and so I had big wing bones, it seemed like. They stuck out. But this... Uh, scapula has a couple of parts to it that you need to know. One of them is this big indentation. This is called the glenoid cavity. And if I go back up here to the model, it's got a screw in it right here. This is the glenoid cavity. It is the area that is what we would consider the shoulder joint. If I take this bone here and put it in there, that's about how it would work. So this is called the glenoid cavity. Now, off of the glenoid cavity, you can kind of see there's uh, this little um, part that sticks out right here. Right? This is called the coracoid process. Now, the glenoid cavity and the coracoid process are kind of together as a group, but then we have this really easy-to-see ridge that comes off of the one side of the scapula. All right, if I look at it like this, I mean, this ridge is a pretty easily seen structure. Um, if you feel behind your shoulder, you can feel that ridge. And that's an important landmark to know. We're going to look at some muscles later on that are uh, around that ridge. This is called um, the spine of the scapula or the scapular spine. Either way is, is good, but you can't just say spine. It is the spine of the scapula or the scapular spine. And now if you're looking at it, you can kind of see it comes up and then it flattens out here. So if I'm looking straight down on it, right, you can kind of see how it flattens in this little area. 
That little area, if I turn it this way and look at it, is called the acromial process. Now, in your studies and trying to learn the, uh, the locations or the names of the di different parts of the body, you'll learn that the shoulder is called the acromion. That's where this comes from, the acromial process, because this is what we would consider the point of the shoulder. Now, if anybody is going into physical therapy, there's a really important joint where the, um, the uh, clavicle joins and kind of articulates with the acromial process. This is what's called the AC joint, acromial clavicular joint, acromial clavicular joint. I pointed the wrong way. Um, if you've ever heard of someone having a separated shoulder, this is the joint that they injure. All right? So that's the, that's the pectoral girdle. And I'm going to leave it at that, and then I'm going to make another video that talks about the, um, the upper appendage, which we commonly call the arm.